everyone, welcome back to my channel, Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm going to be doing a quick mountain demonstration. Um, I've been working on mountain studies lately and I'm using this, this sketchbook that I've had in my plethora of sketchbook collections uh, to try. And I thought, oh, it looked really good, the paper looked really good, but I will tell you this paper is lousy. I'm only using gouache. So with gouache, as you know, you don't use a ton of water. Just putting in a sky, though, is nearly impossible. I don't press hard on paper. And after a little bit, the paper starts pilling up and coming up right off the paper. But um, I've been doing some studies. This I did with Graphitin pencil. And that one isn't bad. Uh, that didn't have a problem because I was just kind of setting the water color or the graphitint right on top of the paper. But when I got to this one, you can see the sky is kind of icky right here. It started to pill. I can feel it with my fingers. And then this is the one that we're going to be doing today. And you will see when I do the sky how, how it starts pilling right about here. Um, I'll show it on camera. Uh, and then lastly, I did this one, but we're going to do the orange one today. And uh, I'm basically just going to be going through it and I will explain what I'm doing as I go so that if you want to learn gouache, you can paint along with me if you'd like. Today, I'm just going to be using my Karen Dash gouache. This is the gouache studio set which I believe is their higher end gouache. Their gouache comes in cakes. I don't know, they might make tubes now also. I haven't checked into it, but um, I like their gouache. Their gouache is very nice. The colors are somewhat bright, so you have to do some mixing to get more um, natural colors for landscapes. This is the set of 15. And um, anyway, oh, it does look like they do make it in tubes as well. They make a gouache studio set in tubes, 12 tubes, so you can get that. But these cakes are really nice. And if you want to take a gouache palette out into the field, I highly recommend this one. I always forget to grab it, and I really enjoy it because these paints reconstitute so quickly, you would be surprised. Now, the palette here, the mixing tray, does stain, but I do clean it with a uh, cleanser. And when I clean it with cleanser, give it a little scrub, that's it, and it cleans right off. I like to do that from time to time so that when I'm mixing colors, I'm not picking up the color underneath. Uh, I don't mean literally picking it up, but seeing the color underneath when I'm trying to mix, you know what I mean? I think that was all I wanted to tell you. So let's just turn around the camera and get painting. Already drawn it in. I've got my mountain set here. I will show you the photo that I am painting from is this photo right here. Oh, let me turn my light off so you can see. There we go. It's this photo right here that I will be painting from and it is on unsplash.com and you can download their app as well. Uh, I like using the web version because then I can download the photos um, easier to my photos and then just delete them when I'm done. But anyhow, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the brush I'm using today is just this premium original gold round number eight brush by King Art and it is golden Taclon. I'm also going to be using the number two from the same brand and that's pretty much it. At one point I think I might be using a sword brush which is a system three brush. It can only be bought in the UK. It's a De La Rowney brush. Now here I'm just mixing up my colors for the sky using a little bit of yellow ochre color along with the light gray that's included in the palette just to give the clouds at the top a little bit of a yellow hue like the photo. Now I'm just going to go in with some white and bring that white down a ways on my sky. Uh, if this set, with this set, you do get a tube of white, which you can see on my left hand side there of the palette, the mixing tray. And I just put it in the area where the tube goes. Now I'm mixing up some orange and 
taking this around the mountains. Don't worry if you get it on the mountains because we will be going in with black up on those edges. So it's not a problem if you get a little bit sloppy with the mountain area. I brought the gray down and then the white and now going in with the brightest orange at the bottom, I'm going to work that back up into the white area. If that white dries, don't worry about it. Depending on how much water you have on your brush, you will start to blend with the white that's on the paper. Now I added a little bit of white here which is fine and gradually I'm going to blend that up into the white area. Then I will go back with my cloud colors and start adjusting the color on this. I apologize for the glare on the paper. This time of year, um, the sun now comes through a different window and I have the blind on the opposite window. Uh, this is gonna become a problem. I may have to get another blind for my window. This is the first time around the calendar for me in the studio. So as the seasons are changing and the sun is moving to a different area in the sky, I am now having issues in different areas of my studio. So I apologize for the glare that you're getting. Right here is an example of that pilling from my paper. Just in that little bit of gouache, that's what it did. It pilled up. If that was watercolor, it would really be a mess because you don't put that much water in your gouache. So it's crazy. I don't know what's wrong with this paper, but it just falls apart. It doesn't have a brand name, so I can't tell you, but if you go on Amazon and you find any watercolor books that have pretty fancy designs on the covers, don't get them because the paper is horrible. I needed a little more yellow in my sunset, so I'm going in here to add a little bit more in, and that really helps make it pop a little bit better. This gouache is excellent if anybody ever wants to buy any gouache to use out in the field or something. It comes in cakes, but it's it, it reconstitutes so well, and it is such easy gouache to work with. Um, I can't remember the expense. It's probably a little more expensive because it's Caran d'Ache, but it is really worth it. I really love this set. I don't use it a lot, but... Um, I do like it. I try to only use it when I'm out in the field. It has limited colors, but really for a set of 15, you've got everything you need because you can mix any color that you need. Now I'm going in in the front mountain here with black. I'll go over that again in just a minute and make it darker. Then I'm going to go into the distant mountains lay down a background color, and then I'll go back in with the shading and highlighting and fine detail. Some of you may be looking at my brush and saying, she's using that brush wrong. 
but I'm just using the point of the brush to get into some fine areas and I flip it over and use the other side as well. Now, I'm studying the picture here, looking at all the crevices and where to put those lines. I'm using the black right now. You see the lighter gray and then the deeper gray. Those are all areas of mountain, and the lighter gray areas are actually snow. And then I will also go in with some white as well. So you'll see white snow and then shadowed snow that is gray. Now I'm going in with my number two King Art brush, which has a very long point to it. It's great for fine detail. If you're new to my channel and you enjoy gouache and watercolor videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell if you'd like to be notified of upcoming videos. And if you enjoyed this video today, hit the like button as well. That really helps me out. Thanks for joining me today. Remember, be courageous, paint with wild abandon, and most of all, be kind to each other. Take care, everybody. God bless you. Bye-bye.